All right, so we're going to talk about chemical reactions, uh, how those actually relate, and enzymes. And uh, if you need to pause to get that joke, you can, but it's Diet Coke and Mentos. All right, chemical reactions. A chemical reaction, simply put, is a process that changes or transforms one set of chemicals into another. In this case right here, what you're looking at is a soap bubble filled with hydrogen gas entering through essentially a match. Now that is going to cause a chemical reaction. The hydrogen and the oxygen are going to react to form water. The hydrogen is inside the gas bubble, the oxygen is of course in the air, and that will form a chemical reaction as through that process that you see right there with the flame, boom, it is going to form a new set of chemicals. Now there's probably another uh, chemical reaction that's not quite as you know flamboyant and in your face, but rust. Rust is a chemical reaction between iron and oxygen. Now normally you think, but it's normally between you know iron and water. Well, the water um, has oxygen in there. That's the part that's actually reacting with it to form uh, rust. Alright, so we're going to talk about chemical reactions and uh, the basics of how they work. So what I have right here is I have iron and oxygen. Iron is Fe, oxygen of course is O2. Now iron and oxygen, if you actually put them together, react to form, and that's what this arrow means. An arrow essentially means reacts to form, and in this case iron and oxygen will react to form iron 3 oxide, better known as rust. So in this case right here, in this chemical reaction, iron and oxygen are actually the reactants. That's what I start with. And that means that the iron 3 oxide that they make is actually the product or what they produce. Our next chemical reaction is going to be hydrogen plus oxygen. Now hydrogen and oxygen will actually burn. This is why hydrogen is flammable. Think, you know, Hindenburg. Iron and o or sorry, hydrogen and oxygen will burn to form actually water. So this means that hydrogen and oxygen are the reactants. Water, in this case, is the product. And in case you're wondering, yes, hydrogen does burn to form water, which is one of the reasons that uh, hydrogen is a tremendous fuel source and the fact that its emissions are essentially water. You could, uh, if there was like a tailpipe coming out of a hydrogen burning car and you put your mouth over it, it would get damp. That's it. Your hair would get frizzy. That's all that would happen with a hydrogen car. But hydrogen and oxygen, the reactants, what I start with, water, the product, what I produce. Now this next equation here, you're going to be seeing a lot more when we get to photosynthesis. This is the photosynthesis equation. Water, carbon dioxide, and energy in the form of light react to form. Now in this case right here, I have the arrow pointing up just to show you, don't look at, you know, left or right, look at where I start with versus where I end. Those are going to react to form C6H12O6, better known as glucose, and oxygen. So in this case, look at where I start with. I'm starting with, hydro, uh, with water, carbon dioxide, and light, and I'm making sugar and oxygen. So in this case right here, water, carbon dioxide, and light are my reactants, what I start with, and sugar and oxygen are what I end with. Now, as you saw in that previous little drawing there, reactants are what you start with, products are what you end with. So in the case of hydrogen plus oxygen making water, reactants are going to be hydrogen and oxygen, products are going to be the water. So it always goes R to P if that helps you remember it. Now some vocab that you need to know, a catalyst is just anything that speeds up a chemical reaction. Now I don't know if you know this, but it, uh, steel will rust if you leave it in water, but when you combine that with salt, that is going to actually speed up that chemical reaction. This is why things rust so badly after a, a winter where they throw a lot of salt down on the road that can make steel parts of cars rust. In that case, the salt is a catalyst. It speeds up a chemical reaction that would actually take place. An enzyme is what you call a protein catalyst that's only present inside the body. So you recall proteins that we already learned about before. They are special catalysts that just speed up chemical reactions that happen in your body. You absolutely need them. They make life possible. And a substrate is going to be a different name for what we would call a reactant. It's what you start with in an enzyme reaction. So instead of reactant to product, when you're talking about enzymes, you replace the word reactant with a substrate. So as you can see right here, I have uh, an enzyme on the bottom in blue and a substrate on top. Hi, 
Sorry to shock you by actually showing you my face and everything, but there's a couple things about enzymes that I kind of want to go over that it's just a little bit easier to show you kind of with my hands. Now, the way I like to think of it is this is not just my hand, this is an enzyme. This is not just my other hand, this is a substrate. And you will notice that in this case right here, I have the enzyme and the substrate and it actually fits in there perfectly. Now, of course, an enzyme is going to change things, so it's going to be enzyme, substrate goes in, and it's going to break it down, and in this case, I'm gonna call that the product. So, enzyme, substrate, product. Now, you'll also notice that fits in perfectly right there. That is called the active site or the activation site. The active site is the part of the enzyme that actually fits in perfectly. And you'll notice in this right here, the enzyme doesn't change. Enzyme, substrate, product. Enzyme is the exact same. And the only way you can actually change that is through a process called denaturing. Denaturing is something that you do like, think of it as like a, a blowtorch. If I was to take a blowtorch to my hand for stuff, ow. But in this case right here, all my fingers would be doing that. And that would change the active site of the enzyme so that the substrate could no longer fit inside and make a product. So just to review, enzyme, substrate, product, active site, and something called denaturing or denaturation would change the shape of this so that it could no longer fit inside there. Well, that's it. Uh, I think that was a lot better than me actually trying to draw it out, plus you got to see how goofy I look and watch me do my hand things. Anyways, back to the presentation. Bye! All right, so let's talk about enzymes. As I already mentioned and showed you, they have an active site where they bind perfectly. Think of it as a lock and a key. Now in this case right here, I actually have the lock right here. That would be the enzyme. The part that actually goes in, the keyhole, that would be the active site. The enzyme is the lock, the substrate is the key, and that part where it actually goes in, the keyhole, that would be the active site or the activation site. They fit together perfectly. You can't just have any substrate fit in there. It has to be a specific one. So enzymes do not actually get changed in a chemical reaction. Here you can see a bit of a uh, example one. The yellow thing uh, that looks like Pac-Man is the enzyme. Here you can see the brown thing is the substrate. It enters the active site. It gets changed and then spits out as a product. But the enzyme didn't get changed. Here's another one. The blue thing represents the enzyme, green represents substrate, and red represents product. Notice that in both the blue thingy and the yellow thingy, uh, essentially the enzyme does not change. And lastly down here, you can see our substrate entering, goes into the active site, it produces products, but there is no change to the enzyme. If I was a DJ, my name would be DJ Enzyme, because I'm always breaking it down. Wiggle, wiggle. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I really just couldn't help myself. Now, as you saw me do before, I was talking about denaturing. So here's a pickup line that you're free to use. Um, just tell them, tell them I, I told you to do this one. You're so hot that you denature my enzymes. Get it? Because they break the stuff down. Okay, I'll stop. Here again, just another review. Enzyme uh, is the uh, purplish thing. It has the active site where the substrate fits perfectly. At the end, it produces products, and the enzyme itself is not changed.